Hello, my name is Hiromi Ortiz. Today I'm here with our veteran, Mr. Young. Do you mind introducing yourself? My name is Mr. Young. I'm a veteran. 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 That's who I am, and thank you for having me. Do you mind telling us which branch of the military you were in? Sure, uh, I served in the U.S. Marine Corps. What are some important things that you learned while serving in the Marine Corps? I think a lot of it instills the leadership traits, uh, decisiveness, responsibility, accountability, tact, uh, just to name a few, and we apply that to our everyday life. And I do take that into teaching every day and teaching our young indigenous scholars. What other attributes from the military did you decide to take in your daily life? Getting up and making sure that I abide by my schedule. So every night before I go to bed, I make sure I have my to-do list and I have a purpose every day. I have a goals that I've already set. The next day, I just go ahead and take care of it. How old were you when you first served in the military? I was about 19, 20 years old. So I was really young. Do you have any other relatives who served in the military? I did. Uh, my first person that I would say was my uncle Howard. He uh, served in the U.S. Air Force. My uncle Arviso served in the U.S. Navy. And my Che, my, my maternal grandfather, his name was Carl C. Harvey. He served in the U.S. Army and he was actually part of the, uh, the storming of the beaches of D-Day. One of my son's grandpa is actually a Navajo code talker and I know that there's a lot of different code talkers out there from different tribes, one of them being the Hopi code talkers. So definitely want to give acknowledgement to them as well. Uh, I know that during World War II, the Navajo code talkers, they're seen as this legendary group of individuals that use their language to not only speak their language over the radio, but also they, they had a they encoded a message through their, their language. There was a lot of uh, other Navajo service members that joined the Air Force, the Army, the Navy, and unfortunately when some were captured, the, the Japanese tortured them and they tried to make them break the code. They heard Navajo speaking over the radio, but they couldn't make out what was being said. And I think that's one of the most powerful weapons that we used was our Navajo code talkers during World War II that turned the tides of the war and put it into our favor that helped win the win in the Pacific Theater. How do you feel about people kneeling to the flag having served in the military, you know? What are your thoughts and outlooks on it? That's a really good question. So for a lot of us who served, we fought for the right to have freedom of speech. And with that right, you have the different amendments to, to make, that, make that choice to have an opinion uh, based upon your beliefs and how you feel about certain, um, how you feel about certain topics. And the whole topic with kneeling during the national anthem, I think that it, it goes two ways. On one hand, I do see that it is a disrespect to service members, men and women who have fought and served and sacrificed, they made the ultimate sacrifice of uh, giving up their life for, for this country that we live in and the, the freedoms that we have. Um, on the other hand, I do see the aspects of racial injustices, inequality, especially for people of color. So I do see where they're coming from and the reason why they kneel for that and the reason why they kneel during the national anthem. So it goes two ways. Um, thank you for letting us interview you here today about this topic. I really appreciate it, and I hope that you have a good day.